Hi guys, I'm Maya, and if you clicked on this video, then I'm going to assume you probably already know a lot about the infamous place called Book Talk, a community on TikTok that is completely centered around talking about everything books, books, books. Book Talk has definitely done a lot, from making indie debut authors into number one bestsellers, creating completely new genres in traditional publishing solely based on popularity, and influencing people to line up in freezing cold temperatures in the middle of the night to get their hands on the latest trendy book that they know is going to sell out. But it's also no secret that thoughts about Book Talk are polarized. Some people say that the books that become popular don't even deserve their praise, while others say that they love it. So in this video, I'll be reading three of the most viral book talk romance books, and I'll be letting you guys know whether I think they're worth the hype or not. Our first book on the list is going to be... going to be Miss Icebreaker by Hannah Grace. Even if you just like been on book talk once, or like seen like a bookstagram page or seen anything social media book related you have seen like the cover of this book also if you've just stepped foot into like a barnes and nobles it's always just like front and center i've seen so many mixed reviews about icebreaker and they're all extremely polarizing i've seen booktubers read this book and be like this is the most atrocious thing they've ever read this is a terrible excuse for literature and i'm like wow i've seen the one star reviews on goodreads and then i've seen people be like this was just a five star read like this was so good this was amazing oftentimes polarizing reviews scare me it's really hard for me to want to commit to something where i think i might have a potential to not like it then i'm like well why would i want to waste my time but i do really want to see what this is about for two reasons a i'm really in my like sports romance era i feel like this is probably the perfect time for me to read this because i'm craving just any level of sports romance give me a sport player any sport really any sport i'm not gonna discriminate and give me a romance with it and I'm gonna probably eat it up at this point in my reading mood. The male main character is like a hockey player and then the female character is like a figure skater. Do I have to read this blurb or do you guys know about Icebreaker? I could still read the blurb for you. Our female main character is Anastasia or Anastasia. I'm not gonna know how to pronounce her name. She's worked her entire life for a shot at Team USA. It looks like everything is going according to plan when she gets a full scholarship to the University of California, Maple Hills, and lands a place on their competitive figure skating team. Nothing will stand in her way, not even the captain of the hockey team, Nate Hawkins. Nate's focus as team captain is one keeping his team on the ice, which is tricky when facilities mishap means they are forced to share a rank with the figure skating team, including Anastasia, who clearly can't stand him. When Anastasia's skating partner faces an uncertain future, she may have to look to Nate to take the shot. Sparks fly, but Anastasia isn't worried because she could never like a hockey player. So you see where this is gonna go. It's gonna go like dislike to lovers is probably the trope. I have heard that there's tons of smut in this book and this book is probably like, majority like just that it's a lot of smut. And it's like, I don't know how I feel. Like I'm like in, I feel like I'm indifferent to smut. Like I could do a book without smut. It, a book doesn't completely disgust me if it has a lot of smut, if it's done well. I don't think it's gonna be a complete turn off if it's not like, like if it's weird i don't know i don't know like that's just like all i've heard is that it's like it's tons of smut and that's really like i don't know anything about the storyline like people don't really talk about the storyline they just talk about like all of the crazy things that these characters do i'm like in genuine need of your help because i really only like to read my books on my kindle just because i read so much faster i get so distracted when i'm like reading in paper form and you may be like maya then why do you buy the paper books i buy the paper books because i like to go back after i finish reading the books on my kindle and transfer my technological annotations into the paper form doodle in the book annotate highlight and then have it on my shelf serotonin to look at it's it's, it's my life okay it's my life like i need them both physically and digitally i i see this really becoming like a really expensive habit because before i was buying books that were like a lot cheaper like i bought the whole windy city series and those were like only like three dollars each this is eleven dollars this is eleven dollars and i paid 18 for this paperback so that means like this is technically like a 20 plus almost 30 dollar like combined purchase for me and i've heard a lot of people talk about getting a library card and then getting libby and then being able to download your free library books onto your kindle and i want to do that but you guys have to let me know what happens to my annotations because like that's my biggest thing like i annotate and then i need to like be able to save my annotations so that i can transfer them so what happens to my annotations if i get a libby and i transfer it to my kindle and i read it on libby if i can keep my annotations i will definitely switch to that and save money my worry with the libby is that if i have to return the book and if it comes off of my kindle when i return it my annotations probably go with it please let me know i'm just gonna like have to like not eat out for like the rest of the month okay i bought it okay i bought it
page update. <laughs> I'm eating it up. Full course meal, I'm eating it up. There's just something about the college setting. I don't think I've read a book with like a college setting. Have I? Like maybe I have and I just, oh yeah, 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 I have. But it was like fantasy. Like I've only read like college setting, like fantasy books, but. <clears throat> Something about the dorms and the lack of parental guidance and the newly adulthood. So like we're still very much childish and like we're doing very much childish things, but like technically like we're adults and so we don't need to answer to people. Oh, so good. <laughs> Don't mind the change of scenery. I'm currently at my mom's house and I'm waiting to go to my last class of the day, which is like in like an hour and a half or so, okay? So this is just like a little pit stop, but I wanted to give you guys my updates on the book because I didn't speak to you yesterday. I'm currently at chapter 17, page 145, and I'm 33% in. I don't even know, I don't even know, I don't even know what to say. I'm enjoying every single moment, every single minute, every single little nugget of this book so far. 145 pages in and I have zero complaints given to the authorities. At the end of every chapter, I'm like itching to get to the next chapter, which is really hard for a romance book to do to me to like get me actually like itching to get to the next chapter. Like it's not like it's a cliffhanger, but it's like, I just, I just want to continue. Like I just want to continue and keep going and like keep experiencing so bad. I'm really enjoying the characters, Anastasia. I'm pretty sure it's Anastasia. Like, I don't know why I'm saying Anastasia. Like it's not Beverly Hills. Anastasia Beverly Hills. I think that's why I'm trying to say that. Cause like only time I've heard of an Anastasia is when it's like Anastasia Beverly hills but no i think her name is just anastasia i like her i like her vibe like i like i like her back and forth kind of like mm, i hate you but like i don't actually hate you but like i'm gonna tell you i hate like i love her back and forth i love nate i love nate hawkins just so like i don't know like he's just a boy and she's just a girl i love the college aspect, I think I already probably said this, but like, it's really just, it's just continuing to grow on me. Like, I love the fact that these are like a bunch of just like grown children, like just grown children with like freedom to drink alcohol and do whatever the hell they want. It's kind of making me like live vicariously through a college experience that I never got. And also it just feels wildly realistic. First of all, I posted like a reel on a TikTok like saying like, oh, okay, like I'm starting icebreaker, just like randomly. Already like they're split thoughts. Like already some people are like, worst thing I ever read. Like worst thing, terrible, da da da. And then are, some people are like five stars. Like it's just so polarizing, which is so interesting. And that's one things that's like great about reading and books so many people have like completely different experiences with the same piece of literature like with the same piece of 400 pages that i'm reading right now somebody is having an entirely different experience that i'm having because i'm having a great experience this book feels like the type of romance books that i like i've, I've seen a lot of people saying that you know there's no plot it's just a bunch of smut and spice it is very spice heavy so keep that in mind if you don't like spice it's very spice heavy the spice doesn't like I'm very indifferent to spice. I would not go into like the spice section of Barnes and Nobles and like specifically seek out books filled with spice. But especially in this book, I feel like adults, like grown adults, like I've read, what was the last book I read? Oh, I read, what was it? Yours Truly, Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. I read that, that actually didn't really have any spice. It had like a tiny bit of spice, but there's something about like adult, like grown adult spice that I'm just like, okay, it's like whatever. like. Okay, whatever. There's something about like the fact that these are like 21 year olds. Okay, like they're raging horny college students that are always drunk off of cheap liquor and cheap beer, heavy testosterone because they're all sports players. These are like big ass jocks that are just like sweating and grunting all the time. You mean to tell me, you mean to tell me you don't expect them to be humping and grumping and grinding every damn day. Like this feels like the most realistic thing that I've ever read. They're always drunk and they're always hooking up 
everybody's hooking up with everybody else. It's messy as hell. There's no coherence. There's no common sense. And it's like, yeah, there's no, like, I mean, I, I don't know, like, what people say with there's no plot, but I'm like, I guess they mean, like, there's no, like, trajectory. I, I don't know. I, maybe I have to finish it to see the whole no plot thing. But I'm like, it just feels like a soap opera. Like, it feels like we're watching a soap opera of, like, the popular kids in college. And me personally, I was never invited into the popular groups in all in all of my schooling settings. Like, I've never been in with the popular kids. This feels like I'm getting the inside scoop of the popular kids that I never got in with. And I'm, like, seeing all their messy drama. And, like, I'm just getting the inside vibes. And it's like, I love that. Like, and I don't mind if there's no like crazy deep plot happening like i could literally just like have them talking with each other and i'm vibing i'm also like laughing and it's not like a laughing at it and i'm like oh this should have been ironic this is weird that this is an unironic thing like they're actually like it's like kind of funny like i don't i don't know anything about hannah grace she's kind of doing the gen z humor quite well like personally personally that's what personally Personally, I think these characters are quite funny. Nobody takes themselves seriously. Everybody is self-aware that there are a bunch of grown children. I also really like like the text messages, the group chats, Uber slut. Oh, I did get past the Uber scene, okay? The iconic Uber scene, I did get past it. And I know that there is a lot of talk. There is a lot of talk about that scene. There's a lot of talk about that chapter. Personally, okay, personally, it wasn't the end of the world to me. It felt quite normal because I have heard real life situations of people doing much worse. And I'm keeping in mind, they're in college. I realistically expect nothing less. Like this feels like the, you know what I'm saying? Like when you watch those like raging, like Project X college movies where it's like just all about partying on frat row, you know what I'm saying? I never got that college experience, okay? I'm still in college and I'm like, that is nowhere, nowhere in my horizon. I have always wanted to experience that. So I'm like, this is my only way I'm getting to experience that. The Uber scene, the Uber scene felt fine. Like for some reason, the Uber scene was like, okay, yeah, like why would they not? You know what I'm saying? Like some people are like, oh, it's so wrong. I'm, so, I'm like, college, 21. Let's lower our expectations for these people. I'm gonna continue reading until class. I have like an hour and I'm gonna do that. literally just just made it to the halloween chapter and i know that's gonna be crazy like i know i know i know it's about to be crazy and i gotta go to class like i just want to be here sat basketball on in the background reading my little crazy book that's all i want anyways let me go get my education <laughs> like this i was hoping the next update that i had for you guys would be that i finished icebreaker and i was ready to like give you my rating give you my final thoughts but i'm still only 86 percent on the way through i've just like not anything where i'm like dragging my feet to read the book it's just like literally all day today i was editing a vlog and then i just finished putting the vlog up and like now i have time to read but then in an hour, it's time for the People's Choice Awards red carpet. And I know you're gonna be like, well, Maya, just prioritize what you need to prioritize. And I'm like, I'm trying. But at the same time, like, I just wanna do everything. And I'm like, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, 80, I'm 86% through. And I'm hoping to finish it by tonight. But also the People's Choice Awards are tonight. And I love a good People's Choice Awards. While I was editing, I was watching college basketball because I've had this new obsession with college basketball. Honestly, guys, the, the amount of sports romances I've been reading has really just turned me into this like fake sports fan. And I need to preface this fake before some type of like sports advocate comes for me and is like, you're not even a real fan. Okay, so I'm gonna say that I'm fake just so that you know that I'm not taking myself too seriously. I was watching that this morning while I was editing and then the game finished, okay? The game finished. It was like South Carolina, South Carolina. Anyway, the game finished and then they were like, now we're going to hockey. And I was like, wait, like, you know what I'm saying? Like normally I'm, I wouldn't really watch hockey. Like I really don't know anything about hockey. 
But considering I'm reading the most famous, TikTok famous hockey romance, I'm like, you know what I'm saying? Like, why not see what this is about? It's the New York Rangers versus the New York Long Island. New York, New York, Long Island. They keep saying that this is like a really intense game because they're like huge rivals. Cause I guess they're both new. Oh my God, they're just shoving each other. Like this is, it's so violent. Apparently like they can fight in hockey. I don't know if you're, if you're like a hockey person and you know more about hockey, like just let me, give me like a rundown on the gist because we've had two fights break out like and like fight fights. Like they were like punching, punching each other and nobody was breaking it up. Like nobody, they just let them fight. And then until they were like, okay, I'm like, I'm done fighting. Like it turned into like a, a boxing match in the middle of the hockey game. And then they were like, okay, we're finished. And then the refs were like, okay, go to your box. And I'm just like, what's going on? It's finally time to discuss her. Finished her last night at like 1 a.m. I feel like I hate giving my thoughts in the morning because I don't have as much energy and I feel like this book requires a lot of energy. I wanna give my rating and I also wanna give if I think it's worth the TikTok hype. I think I'm gonna give Icebreaker a 4.5. I was like thinking that it would have been a five star, but I don't know, like it has potential to be a five star, but I just don't see myself thinking about it and like remembering the characters, daydreaming about the characters the way that I do other five star romance books. So I feel like that's the only reason that I can't give it a five star. 4.5 star, no notes, no notes. One of the main comments is that A, this book has no plot and it also is like basically just a very like spice filled book. I would agree with both of those statements. This book I would say is 50% spice, maybe 45, but realistically like I think 50% spice and if there wasn't like a full on spice chapter, there was definitely like spice discussed in detail between these characters. Like it was very much a centering aspect of their relationship was a spice. So if that's something that like you're not a huge fan of, I definitely would not suggest this book because this book is very much centered around spice. Also about the no plot aspect, cause people were saying it's like no plot and just spice. And I would agree. It's very much describing the plot. Mm, I mean, I never told you guys the, no, I did read you guys the blurb and I read you guys the blurb and the blurb is, is basically like the plot. Like it's just a figure skater and a hockey skater. You gotta have that rivals to lovers start because the figure skater is really serious about her figure skating. Okay, she really wants to get to the Olympics. And you know, of course it's like, she's upset with the hockey team for having to share her rank with the hockey team. And like, that's kind of where it goes. That's kind of where it starts. But realistically, like the plot is kind of just college students being college students with like a hint of like a villain you know what i'm saying like a hint of like a college villain i would describe this i feel like there needs to be a word for these kinds of romances because it's not a rom-com at all i feel like a rom-com has a very specific structure like this is very much like a college situationship turned relationship kind of like muddled titles going on reading them exist kind of like in a reality TV type of way. Like we're going about their like lives. I really liked the like found family aspect with this book with the hockey team. The hockey team I found really funny and just like endearing the way that they're described as like these big, huge, just like muscular men. I was in the beginning of this book because there's so many characters introduced because it's like this huge like college town. So like there's, Everybody knows everybody. So there, there's all these names going around. And I was like getting confused with so many people, especially people on like the hockey team. But like by the end of it, I kind of got it. But still by the end of it, there was like some characters names in there that I was like, wait, who are you? When were you on the hockey team? This, this book felt comforting. I like never felt like things were too intense. It felt fun. They felt very, they felt more mature than some adult rom-coms that I've read about like 30 year olds. And I really enjoyed the aspect of Stassi going to therapy because it really helps me not be annoyed by her because I get so annoyed by female characters when I'm like, open your damn mouth or I'm about to close the book. Unless you go open your mouth and just tell this man how you're feeling. It is not rocket science. And Stassi, Stassi always kind of like explains her feelings because of her therapy. So if you are like me and you are terrified of miscommunication and it literally makes you want to vomit the slightest moment that it happens in a book, this book has zero miscommunication. And I feel like that like bumped it up so many stars. It was already like in high regard for me, but the fact that there's zero miscommunication 
fabulous, fantastic, amazing. Is it worth the TikTok hype rating? I can definitely see why this got the TikTok hype because it's just really an entertaining read. If you're into entertaining fan fiction-esque, domestic, comforting, not too intense romance books that are kind of just like very like spice heavy and very just like random and chaotic. I am excited for Russ's book. I definitely will be picking up and like reading Wildfire probably like after, I don't know, like maybe after I finish these three books that I want to read for this video. I don't even know if I'm going to get through three of them. I don't know. I don't know. I thought I was recording for like five minutes and I wasn't. Now I forgot everything that I just said, but I think it was along the lines of we need to keep it pushing. We need to start our next book. And also I have a doctor's appointment today, like in three hours that I need to go to. But the next book that we're going to read is very much viral on TikTok viral on TikTok right now too, but you know, it has been for a while. We will be reading The Magnolia Parks, okay? Every time I hear people talking about Magnolia Parks, they're always like, oh, it's like Gossip Girl, but for books. And I'm like, that sounds like a good vibe. They're like toxic love story, chaos, vibes, a bunch of rich British people in London. And I'm like, this sounds like a good time. Like after I just read Icebreaker for the vibes, like if you're telling me like Magnolia Parks is just gonna be more vibes, I'm actually, I'm, I'm here for it, I'm here for it. I don't have the physical copy of Magnolia Parks at all, which like doesn't matter because I had the physical copy of Icebreaker and read it all on my Kindle. But I don't have the physical copy to like hold up and show you guys because I was gonna order it, but Magnolia Parks went through this little new cover rebranding thing like a couple months back. They're calling it like the shoe covers. Like, these are the OG covers. And these are the shoe covers. Like, I'm pretty sure I had this conversation one time on my channel. I don't absolutely hate the new covers. Like, I probably, like, if I really enjoy this series, I probably will be getting the new covers just because I'm addicted to, like, buying the multiple editions of books. The old covers are, like, a work of art. And everybody says they have, like, Easter eggs in them. They're just beautiful to look at. And the old covers I would have gotten regardless because they were something where it's, like, even if I didn't like the series, I would have wanted those covers on display on my bookshelf. The traditionally published United States covers are the new shoe covers. On Amazon, they have like a package deal where you could get it for like, like a lot of money. It's like uh, over a hundred dollars and only for like the first four books because there's five books in the series right now. I think it's, what is it? Magnolia Parks Into the Dark just came out literally last week. I think, I think it came out on Valentine's Day. So it's like now there's five books in the series. Looked up on TikTok where I can find the old covers and you can get them from Blackwell's, which is a UK bookstore. Went on that website and I went on Blackwell's and I put every single one. I put all five OG covers in my cart for Blackwell's. It was like $82 in total, which was still cheaper than the Amazon option, which was like $100 for four. But it's coming all the way from the UK and I ordered those in the middle of last week. So I don't know if it's gonna come by the time I finish this video, but I think it's still in like shipping. Like if you're in the UK, please just like know how lucky you are because the UK covers are just always so much better. Once Upon a Broken Heart. Haven't read that, but like the UK cover of that is 20 times better than the US one. Binding 13, which I do plan on reading, will have to be getting the UK cover because the US cover, no. I don't know what it is. And I really just would love to be in publishing so I can know why the UK gets all the better covers. If anybody in publishing is watching this and you know, please let me know. Not this having 3.82 stars on Goodreads. How much is this? Let's pray for cheap. No, not cheap. Not cheap. I'm enjoying it. I've only been in Magnolia's POV so far because it's dual POV with Magnolia and BJ, our two main love interests. And I'm really excited to see BJ's POV because it's giving like frat boy sleeps around type energy. And like, I want to see his own internal monologue of like what he's thinking when he looks at her because she's like, you know, she's going through her insecurities. But like, I want to I want to see what he's insecure about and what he's feeling because obviously it's like they still love each other you know what i'm saying and already knowing that this is going to be like a lot of like found family which is going to be nice
bitches are crazy. These bitches are crazy. This is like a reality TV show soap opera. Like I thought the other romance books I was reading were soap opera -y. No. This is a... They're beating him up on the side of a street. And he says, what? Understand? I growled. It's Parks. She's mine. I pick him up off the ground and shove him again. She'll always be mine. As he's kicking this man repeatedly in the stomach and his older brother is watching it happen. How do we have so much drama on page 38? BJ is igniting, reigniting that toxicness that we get when we know we're not supposed to love Damon Salvatore and Klaus Mikeson the way we love them because they are just so very bad. Very, very bad sometimes. BJ is giving me that. He's giving me very much Klaus Michelson, Damon Salvatore vibes. Like we should not be enjoying him this much. Cause I'm like, kick him again. <laughs> so much drama. I'm... talk about gossip girl this never happened to no gossip girl we're barely 40 pages in that thing is happening again where there's like so many characters and i'm forgetting who these people are and they just keep saying names and i'm like who and i'm unable to picture anything so hopefully this gets better but as of right now i'm like who the hell is perry who is periwinkle who is playly Pli it doesn't help that they all have these kind of odd names like why is his name baxter The way I can't even describe this as like a soap opera, like the way that this is like, this is a euphoria film. This is euphoria. Jessa Hastings wrote euphoria before euphoria was a thing. Rue? When was this? Rue, when was this? No, this is actually giving euphoria. This is, this is literally giving Cassie and it's giving a little bit of Rue. A lot of Rue. I'm just so shook, like I'm just, I just, I didn't know what, I didn't know what to expect. It's one o'clock. I have class at 9 a.m. I need to shower and go to bed. But all I want to do is continue reading to know what happens next in Euphoria. This feels like Euphoria Sundays, but it's a book. Like if this book was a show, it needs to be an HBO show. Obviously not by Sam Levinson because I hate that man. And I don't think he should make any more stuff, but it needs to be like an HBO, A24-esque, teen, gritty show. All of that, cause Shorty got a boyfriend, like, damn. That might be worse than Damon Salvatore. No, Damon Salvatore did kill a man because he thought Elena didn't love him. You know, I wouldn't put it past BJ Valentine to do something like that. Like, if Magnolia Parks was like, BJ, I don't love you. BJ, I could never love you. It was never gonna be you. I could see him pulling a Damon Salvatore and killing one of Magnolia's friends. Just like on the low. <laughs> you guys, I don't think the, la the last time that I've flown through a book this fast was probably while reading Fourth Wing or while reading a book in the Throne of Glass series. I'm like, this might not be fast to you, but I'm already 35% through and I'm at page 150. And I'm like, realistically, this book could get finished by like tomorrow afternoon. And like, I know I was saying that about Icebreaker a lot, but the way that this has me in a chokehold, like the way that I feel like I'm watching like a reality TV show and like they keep, like one thing, did I already say this? Like this could be a Netflix series where it's like at the end of each chapter, like it's like as if it's having that like five second countdown where I like needed to choose whether I'm gonna go out of the application or if I'm gonna let it play the next episode. That's me every single chapter. And I keep going every single time because I'm the drama, 
the drama like the dra like it's just drama i'm at the edge of my seat i'm always at the edge of my seat and i just want to like it's 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 an addiction it's an addiction like i literally feel like i'm watching the most scandalous television show like i completely understand the whole gossip girl comparison also like because I was never a huge Gossip Girl fan. Did I already say this? I don't know if I'm repeating things that I'm saying. I was never a huge Gossip Girl fan, but I think this is making me want to and need to go back and just rewatch Gossip Girl because, you know, I watched it when I was real young and I, I don't think I really like understood and really appreciated the value of the drama that was Gossip Girl. First of all, Tom England. Tom England. Tom England. Also, Christian. First of all, all of them. All of them. Every single one of them. Every single man in this book. Every single one of them. Baffled. Silenced. Bamboozled. Also, I'm like, like, I just have so many questions. I, and it's like the way that Jessa is like revealing everything. The way that this book is written is unlike any type of book I've ever read written before. Some points, her writing style is a little bit confusing to me because she leaves out like pronouns. Like she won't say like I or she or he. Are those pronouns? I th like me not knowing. Like she'll leave those out. And sometimes I have to just add them in because like it breaks my, that has nothing to do with anything. I don't know. She just has like a definitely a unique writing style. And I think it's, I think it's nice. But like one thing that I really enjoy is like the structure of her writing because the book is actually a lot of flashbacks to when these characters are younger. Cause right now they're in like their mid twenties and the book is like very heavily like flashbacks. But the way that they're written is not in a way that makes you feel like you have to like trudge through a flashback. Like it's just added in so seamlessly that I don't even realize I'm reading a flashback. Really. Like I know I am, but it's like I, I know like it's just it's it's just like a continuation. Like it's something I would have read regardless to continue the plot. I'm always scared about books getting TV show deals and movie deals because I know Hollywood really screws up stuff that's done really well but if this was given to like hbo and given to like a really good director and producer that really let jessa kind of like work in tandem with them this would freaking eat as a show like i'm picturing the flashbacks between like old magnolia and old bj and current magnolia and current bj and like kind of having it like be like dual timeline and it just Anyways, I'm gonna get, I just need to give you that update. I'm gonna get back to it. I've been, uh, I was up till 3 a.m. last night because I just kept going. I just kept going because it was like every, every page I turned, how could you expect me not to go? Keep going. more confused about the relationship status and the feelings of these main characters than I feel like the main characters are because what do you want what do you like I'm confused like just tell me who you want me to to root for and I'll root for them but I'm confused Magnolia I'm confused she's confusing me and it's like making me a little bit upset because it's like all you have to do is tell me who to root for and I'll root for them but she's not telling me I don't know why this is making me so like upset, but I'm like, you can't try to get me emotionally attached to somebody. Like, why do I feel like she's making, she's messing with my emotions? Like, why do I feel like she's playing me right now? Because I'm like, who do you want me to get attached to, Magnolia? Like, what are you doing? Stop playing with my feelings, Magnolia! Girl, you're pissing me off. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God, sit back down. <laughs> sit back down, what do we do? Sit back down. Oh my god, what a plot.
plot twist. I mean, it's not even a plot twist. Like, we saw it coming. We saw it coming. But I'm like, I'm, why, like, why am I more excited for this? Y'all don't even know what I'm talking about. I gotta reread that. That was, wow, that was a good, wow, that was too good. That had me a little speechless. The way he stood? The way he st oh, wow. Okay, I'm gonna need Parks to stand up a little bit. I'm gonna need Parks to stand up a little bit. The one thing that is frustrating me is her constant apologizing for things she doesn't need to be apologizing for. Okay, Parks, like, you have no reason to be sorry. Magnolia, you need to stand up. Stand on your business. Okay, stand on business because our other main character is certainly standing on his business. Okay, he's been standing on it. He's been standing on it. You know what I'm saying? And I love him. You know what I'm saying? Like, love you, BJ. Love you, BJ. But I'm gonna need Magnolia to stand up and stop apologizing because she ain't got nothing to be apologizing for. Okay, that's the only thing that's frustrating me. Like, stop saying sorry. You don't need to be sorry. Own your shit, girl. Own your shit. Period. Wow, that is a terrible statement. Everybody's talked about Magnolia Parks and like we all know going into it, this is a toxic relationship. This is this is a toxic relationship. Okay, this is nothing to aspire to. But if you needed one thing to solidify that this is a toxic relationship, okay, this isn't a spoiler, but just just to set the tone, just to set the tone. What have my main characters just said? The problem with me and Parks is I think we love each other more than we love ourselves. Girl, let's go to therapy. Let's go to therapy and figure that out. I'm glad that we're self-aware. Now let's go fix the problem. Okay, let's go head into the office. All right, let's go clock in with Dr. What's-His-Face. Okay, let's go hit therapy. You know, I think if the universe is combined, I would really hope that Anastasia and Nate met BJ and Magnolia and Anastasia, like, you know, gave them some therapy advice and like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like I think if, if, if BJ and Magnolia had Anastasia and Nate's level of like openness to therapy, we would be so good. Like we would be so good. Cause like they're almost there. Cause I love the self-awareness. Okay. Cause y'all don't love yourselves. Y'all don't love yourselves at all. Okay. Maybe they don't even need therapy. Like maybe we could start off small and I think they would really benefit from reading Bill Hooks. Okay. All about love. Like I think if BJ and Magnolia both simultaneously just sat down, took a moment out of their day, out of their shopping. I'm like, yo, we're gonna read Bell Hooks. Change the game. Like, change the game. Within the first chapter, it'll change the game. Cause Bell, Miss Bell Hooks would be very disappointed in this relationship. She'd be very disappointed and she would immediately know all the problems. Immediately know all the problems. Cause I haven't even read All About Love and I've only gotten snippets of it and I already know. I already know based on what Miss Queen Bell Hooks said is the issue here. And evidently they know too, because they really just said it. You know those moments where you have like a wishing well, you could be like, in another life, I wish, in another life, in another life, I wish I was able to pull the way Magnolia Parks is able to pull. Cause why could she bag any of the hottest men in London? Like the way that Miss Jessa Hastings is describing these men, and Magnolia is just eating them up, eating them up, eating them up, eating them up. Eating them up, eating them, eat, like rejecting them and eating them up. Like, I want to be Magnolia Parks when I grow up. And we're damn near the same age, so like, I don't got much time. <laughs> Cause what do you mean? What do you mean? The girls are tussling. The girls are tussling. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh god. Oh god. <laughs> this is too much. This is too much. Oh. or is this drama like I know I'm 81% through so like I know we're gonna close to the end and this is making me terrified for how this is gonna end because I know this is if th this is gonna end on some drama like 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 gossip girls identity reveal drama even though that wasn't really that dramatic so like maybe like a different type of drama oh my god I don't know if I can continue What's about to happen? Like, I don't know. Like, I'm just, 
Like I'm rooting for all the people. I'm rooting for all the people that I feel like are stacked up to have the, the, the worst ending in this book. <sighs> I'm on chapter 51. For any of you that read this book, please. Am I just dramatic or is this the drama? I need like a tree connection, like a situationship tree connection. I'm getting lost. Again, girl, I don't think it's your fault, but whatever you're doing, I think you gotta calm down. She's kind of reading her for filth. He's kind of reading her for a veil, but at the same time, not really. But kind of is, but not really. Ooh, should I highlight that? I don't think I'm gonna highlight that. I'm gonna highlight that and see how I feel coming back to it, but I don't know if I should highlight that. All these hoes are a mess. All these hoes are a mess. How are your side characters even in the most messiest relationships I've ever seen? How are the side characters having their own love triangle that I am invested in? Y'all are all a mess and you need mental help. And I really wish this book Honestly, like this could have been like a Sarah J Mass level book that had like seven different POVs and I would not have minded because I need a, a well, I know that I know that Daisy hates books is about is I know that Daisy hates books are Daisy hates and Christian's POV, but I'm gonna need a Jonah's POV. Is that his name? Joe? I'm gonna need a Jonah's POV. Honestly, I'm gonna need a Playly. Playly? Is that her name? Playly? Playly or Paley? Paley. I'm gonna need a Paley's POV because I feel like she, I feel like there's something going on there. I'm gonna need a Tom's POV for sure. For sure, because I need to know what's going on with him. I'm gonna need a Henry's POV. And then I don't really need a Perry's POV, but honestly, I think I could get a Perry's POV because I feel like there's something there too. Like y'all are all shady and y'all are all suspicious. And I need your POVs to know what's going on because I feel like I'm being left out of the conversation. I feel like I'm being left out of the room. Jessa really needs to write for television. Can somebody get that note to her? Jessa, please. Somebody, Shonda Rhimes, please like hit up Jessa and do your producing duties because I need a show written by Miss Jessa Hastings because she has an art for like... You know? Me and Jonah got beef. I'm not rocking with Jonah. He's shady and we got beef. That's all I gotta say. Mm-mm. Not stanky, 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 stanky Jonah. If I was a fly on the wall, you know, if I was a part of this friend group, I'd be so sick and tired. I'd be so sick and tired that anytime I wanna go out, anytime it's my birthday, anytime we have to have some type of social gathering, it can't end without crying, fighting, someone getting jumped, or hard drugs. Can we just have a normal night? Too many updates, too many updates that y'all don't even understand unless you've read this book. But I'm like, why is this also kind of like a mystery? Like, why does this make me want to read a thriller? Because I'm like, I just spent 400 pages and I still don't even know what he did. And I'm like, Jessa has had me on the edge of my seat countless times. And like, I just want to know. And I really hope I find out at the end of this book. Cause I swear, I swear if I have to wait to find out to like the third book of them, I just want to know what he did. Like, I just want to know. I just want to know. Like, they've been teasing me this whole goddamn time. She's pissing me off. It should have been you. I'll take you. I'll take you. It should have been you. Why did that hurt me more than I think it hurt her? Like, what do you mean? <laughs> There's nothing to cry about, but I'm just so distraught. It should have been you. It should have been you. Wait a damn minute. If this is what I'm thinking that I'm thinking, what I'm thinking, I have one chapter left and I'm, I'm thinking what I'm thinking is thinking that's true. Then wait what I'm thinking, but I'm thinking can't be true. Cause what? Oh my God, guys. I don't know what's going on, guys. What the f is going on? Spill the tea, BJ. Why would it spill the tea, BJ? Oh, 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 oh. I did not see that one coming. I didn't see. Oh. If I believe that oh this is feeling so pretty little liars like I don't know who's lying to me 
Ooh, this is very pretty little liars. Let me continue and I'll I'll check back in. Mm. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. We're getting the flashback. We're getting the flashback. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Wait, what's the re we <laughs> What the heck? What the heck? What the heck? I feel stupid for not... Now I gotta read the whole thing over again to be like... I'm gonna have to give you my rating tomorrow because I feel like I need to decompress and like decompress and process like the drama like after having a process like a cliffhanger of like a netflix series like i could go and just buy the next book on kindle but the next book ain't even magnolia's book the next book is ooh, i spat the next book is daisy's book and i'm like now i gotta get into daisy's vibe and like i know that they're on like the same timeline so like daisy daisy's book so daisy hates will be like the same timeline that this book was. So we're going back to be the beginning of this year and we're gonna have to live out this year from another perspective, Daisy's perspective with Christian. And I'm like, I just wanna see, I just wanna see what happens after this. I just wanna see what happens after this. I wanna see if my girl learns how to stand on business. I, 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 there's just so much I need to know. And it's like making me afraid for going into Daisy Hates because I'm like, Daisy, like, I'm sure I'm gonna enjoy you, girlfriend. But right now I'm focusing, I'm focusing, I'm, fo I, 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 I'm focused. I'm focused, I'm focused on something else. I'm focused on something else. If you like that season of the Vampire Diaries where Elena is, you know what I'm saying? And she's now in college. And then there's like Aaron, and then there's like stuff with Aaron, but then there's Catherine. And then Catherine does that thing where she like does that thing. And then Damon realizes, and then Elena's back. And then they have that argument where she's like, oh, I almost had the monologue memorized. Look at us, Elena, this is toxic. We're in a toxic relationship. Me forgetting the monologue, I'm messing it all up. Elena's like, well, I love you. And Damon's like, well, stop loving me. And then Elena's like, I can't. And then they hook up. That is the epitome of this book. I'm sorry guys, it's not, it's not the next day. <laughs> I'm just crying so hard because I, <laughs> I'm not even sad. Think about this was sad to me. I'm just crying so hard because I really want to know what happens next. <laughs> and, I, and I have to wait <laughs> because I have to read another book. Gossip Girl here, and I have the biggest news ever. One of my many sources, Melody91, sends us this. Spotted at Graham Central, bags in hand. I remember now why I never made it past the pilot episode whenever I tried to rewatch Gossip Girl and the many past times I've tried to do it. Because I'm, Chuck has no redeeming qualities. Like I get it, there's like, what, like seven seasons and like he, he falls in love with Blair and he's like good to Blair. There's no redeeming him in my eyes. Like after the pilot and I'm like, we mean to tell you mean to tell me you mean to tell me you mean to tell me that chuck bass in the pilot almost essays two women within a span of two days and we expect that he hasn't done this to other women in the canon of this world that he hasn't done this to multiple other women that he hasn't had multiple victims at the ripe age of what 16 17 you mean to you want me to root for that man and not want him dead? I was just, I think that's why I struggle. So I'ma just have to, I, I wanna continue. I wanna continue. But I'm like, also now I'm just, now I'm, now I'm feeling distasteful for ever trying to compare BJ to Chuck Bass. Cause I complete, I always block this out of my mind. I forget that he tries to do this, especially to a 14 year old. And not especially to a 14, it's, it's terrible either way. Extra, extra terrible that she's 14. I, 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 I feel in my heart that BJ would never, you know, I feel in my heart that BJ would never, you know, he does some really terrible things. 
but he, I feel in my heart that BJ would never cross that line. Chuck is crossing it. And I know people are so Chuck and Blair ride or die and they can look past that. And listen, I won't judge. I won't judge. Cause like, you know what I'm saying? I had to look past Damon Salvatore doing what he did to Caroline in that first season. Cause that was, that was a little shady. But I'm just don't think I'm the type of person that's really gonna look past Chuck Bass. So I'm gonna keep watching and I'm gonna keep hating Chuck Bass in my, in private, okay, just know, whenever I watch the show, I do wish Chuck Bass died within the second episode. I think that would have been great. Or he went to prison. It's just so crazy to me that in the early 2000s, we really had shows that just really just were like, consent, what is it? <laughs> like, let's make a character a bad boy and just say, oh yeah, he, he don't know the word consent. He don't know what that is, but like, but let's redeem him. I'm like, you can't redeem somebody that doesn't know what consent is. Like, that's irredeemable. That's like being a serial killer and being like, oh yeah, let's let's redeem them. No, there's no redeeming that. I'm so tired. Okay. I really wish that I had the physical books here with me to like just hold up and show you because I've just been flapping around my Kindle the whole time. I checked my shipping. Honestly, I don't think those books are gonna come for like a little while because I don't even think they've like shipped yet. I don't know. I'm just, cross your fingers for me that they do end up coming because I really, really hope that they're coming. We're just gonna have to discuss. You're just gonna have to picture the book. It's time to give you my rating. I really didn't even need time to think it over. I think I just needed time to think over what I wanted to say. I needed no time to think of what my rating was. I knew as soon as I closed that book or as soon as I turned off my Kindle, this was a five star read. Five stars, no no. Whether it's worth its TikTok hype, I do truly think so. I think the TikTok hype is warranted. I could see why it got the TikTok hype because what a ride. What what a ride. What, I don't even know where to start, but what a ride. My first thought, this book is the definition of a great time. Fun, it is entertaining, it is dramatic. If you are into reality television and just the chaos, the insanity of reality television, you will eat this book up because it's just drama after drama after drama after billionaire after, well, they're not billionaires, they're millionaires. They're, they're millionaires. Multi, 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 multi millionaire. If you enjoy that aspect, I really enjoy reading about really rich people because it just really allows me to have that escapism. Okay, I'm not. <laughs> Really enjoyed that and the mansions and the cars and the outfits honestly the outfits I hear a lot of people talking about the outfits because basically Jesse Hastings like is very detailed about the clothing that majority of the characters are wearing because Magnolia is a fashion enthusiast she can tell like what someone's wearing just by looking at it whenever we're in her perspective we get like detailed descriptions of outfits with designer names and labels I pretty much skim past all of those because when I read like I picture scenes in my head and I picture like vague images, but I don't think I picture details. Um, so like what people are wearing, I always, I can never picture it. So I just ignore it. So I ended up like passing by those, but a lot of people are really into those. And there's also like Instagram pages that you could like look up Magnolia's outfits, which is like really cool because they're like real outfits. Like I guess Jessa herself is really into fashion. Cause like you gotta be to know all of these. Like she's like 2002 Gucci polka dot stripe. Like she, all the details, she knows all the details. The friend group is just, they're so dramatic and they're so messy, which is amazing. I love reading and watching a good mess. This is a non-spoiler review. But if you want to go into this book very like with your own perceptions on BJ and Magnolia's relationship, you can skip forward. I'm not going to spoil anything about the relationship. I'm just going to give you my thoughts and opinions on their relationship. At the end of this book and throughout the entirety of this book, I never once rooted for BJ and Magnolia to be together. That They were never my end game. Like they're never like, you know what I'm saying? Like they're, I, I, I don't want them to end up together. That could just be this first book. Like we could have, they have two more books. I know the last book in Magnolia and BJ's POV just got released, Magnolia Parts Into the Dark. And that's like the end of their story. And you know what I'm saying? There has to be a lot that happens between from this book to that last book in order for me to, to, to root for these for this couple. And you know, I think it's possible. If Jessa, if Jessa enters our two characters into some extensive therapy, in some extensive therapy for, for a long period of time, family therapy, couples therapy, and then individual therapy, like regularly. And I'm like, then I could start seeing it. But I just personally don't in my brain see them ever working without serious clinical help. And I would just, would never be able to root for them, but I will absolutely read their story because 
they're just silly goofy people. Like they're just so entertaining because they're so they're so messed up. When you're like watching a car a car wreck, it's sad and it's terrifying and it's scary, but it's like you can't look away because it's just like what's happening. That's BJ and Magnolia's relationship. Do I want them to end up together? No. Honestly, I think they would be so better off if they walked out of each other's lives and never turned back. They would be so much better off. Everybody would be so much better off. But I enjoy that they're you know, still interacting with each other because it's such a train wreck and it's entertaining to me, the viewer. Screw the Chuck and Blair thing because I actually really don't remember Chuck and Blair's relationship, okay? They are Rue and Jules, almost to a T, but like not to a T because Rue and Jules don't have like the back history, but they are Rue and Jules. They are Rue and Jules so bad because they are so, 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 so bad for each other to the extent that Rue and Jules was. Very much that codependency. A lot of people say like Chuck and Blair, Chuck and Blair. I'm saying Rue and Jules. BJ is Rue. Magnolia is definitely Jules. Okay, please, if you read the book, let me know if you agree. I think that is a perfect comparison. So it's gonna be interesting reading the next books because it's like, I absolutely want to continue reading their story, but I actually really don't care if they end up together. There's like one star reviews and then five star reviews back to back. What we're, we're seeing a pattern with the TikTok books because that was the same thing with Icebreaker. It's the same thing with this. The one star reviews are all basically like, you know, this is a toxic relationship, but I think we all know that going in. We all know going in that this is not anything to aspire to. And I really want to, to, to emphasize that, okay? I go into a lot of romance books and I envy a lot of romance relationships, like, because I'm like, why wouldn't you? Like men written by women, they're so great. This is, this is, this is for the, for the first time that I've read a book and I'm like, I'm so glad this ain't me. I'm so glad this ain't me and I'm so glad this will never be me. Regardless of what happens in the end, Regardless of what happens in the end, this is struggle love to its finest and nobody deserves to go through struggle love. It's entertaining to watch and read, but nobody deserves to go through it. But I think people don't like it because it's like, I don't know, I guess people just like, if they can't connect with it and if they can't connect with the, the romance of it, then it's like hard for them to read it. So just keeping in mind, it's very toxic. You're probably not gonna root for them. But at the same accord, I saw some people talking about like, oh, BJ and Magnolia are so end game. Like they're just so, like their love is so real. And I was like, that's where y'all lost me. That's where y'all kind of lost me. Personal opinions that can waver with like whether this is love or not love. I didn't think it was love. And like I said, I think if BJ and Magnolia read Bell Hooks All About Love, okay, and this ain't an advertisement for Bell Hooks because again, I didn't even read the book. I just read summaries of it. I think they would also agree that their relationship isn't love, but more so infatuation and addiction. I, I'm a true, a strong believer. And listen, I'm not one to think that like my way or the highway. Like this is just how I move through life. I believe that love is not a feeling, it's a choice. I don't know, I'm only 21. So like maybe as time grows, that will change. But I'm a very strong believer that love Love is a choice that you wake up every day and you choose to do it. I don't feel like love is a feeling. I feel like love is an action that you have to work to continue to do, which is why I'm like, I don't think y'all, like I think they're addicted each other, to each other. I think they're addicted to the feelings that they get from each other. I think they're addicted to the comfort within each other. I think they have heavy codependency and I think they have heavy anxious attachment styles, especially Magnolia with her daddy issues. Like girl, I see you and I, you got an anxious attachment style. You got to work through that. I don't think they're in love because I don't think that you can be in love and hurt people the way that they've hurt each other. I don't think the two can coincide. Like if somebody told me they loved me and then hurt me the way that both of these people are hurting them, I'd be like, you're a liar. You're a liar because you can't say that you love somebody and then choose to actively hurt them in a conscious way. The way that love was described in this book is like meant to be like that they're like, they're like faded and they're written in stars and like they're meant to love each other. And there's so many quotes. I'm seeing them on Goodreads and it's like people are quoting them like, oh my God, this is true love. But I was looking at these quotes like this is so toxic. They need to run away from each other. This is from Magnolia's perspective. Magnolia said, he's killing me. Loving him is killing me too. And I'm afraid because how many loves really do you get in a lifetime? How many chances do you give it before you let go? Girl, let it go. Love. Personally, again, again, these are all my personal opinions. I would love to hear you guys' thoughts on whether you agree or disagree. Love is never meant to kill you. Like, I get it, grief. 
like grief and heartbreak is a is a big thing but when you're actively in love with somebody it's you're not meant to feel like you're dying okay i do think love can have hard aspects but i think this should be hard because you're like working internally to grow to to grow with somebody and like you're working through things and communicating and understanding and having compassion but it shouldn't be hard because you can't trust somebody but you also love that like it shouldn't be hard in that aspect and it also shouldn't kill you and it shouldn't make you like want to, to harm like to harm yourself like it just like that isn't love to me it's addiction take a cigarette or take a jewel for the modern ages for the modern ages nobody with a jewel or with a cigarette is walking around being like i love my cigarette i love my jewel like i love it like i love it no it's like you're not walking around doing that you're you're walking around being like i need it i need it in my life i need it to feel better I need it to feel comfortable. I need it to feel good in these moments. I can't live without it. That's an addiction. That's not loving somebody. And we can like understand that. And I think the same thing can happen in relationships where we don't realize, we think we're in love with something, but realistically we're addicted to the feelings that we get from somebody. And I think this is a prime example of being addicted to somebody and not in love with them because you don't ever need anybody like you don't ever need a romantic partner to live that's just my personal thoughts i think when people say like oh i can't live without them i need them i think that's very unhealthy because i think you have to be your own individual person you have to be a hundred percent fully yourself a hundred percent fully able to love yourself and a hundred percent able to exist on your own and then all you're doing is adding an extra 10 percent, adding an extra 20 percent. so you as a human being should be a hundred percent and then 150 or 100 or 200 percent or 115 percent once you add in a partner you should never be 50 percent and then add in somebody else's 50 percent and that makes you 100 somebody else's half should not make you whole you should be whole on your own and be able to exist on your own without needing them to exist with you that is just grounds for so much codependency toxicity and mental instability that nobody needs in your life that's why i think it'll be interesting to see how they grow in the further books and if they realize that and if jessa kind of like works through that i think those are all of my <laughs> i think those are my thoughts but i would really love if you guys have read the book or even if you haven't read the book like your thoughts on that because it's just like an interesting debate five stars would recommend if you want an entertaining trashy messy hell of a time with drama jaw-dropping moments like scandal after scandal after scandal and you're like holding your breath we're gonna do our third book this is taking two weeks not a week so that's a little tough it's hard because all i want to do mentally right now is read daisy hates okay because i know i said last night that daisy hates was i thought it was christian and daisy's perspective but is it also julian like i saw someone say that it's ju is it i don't know y'all might have read the book are probably screaming at me but i know that like there's julian's perspective in there i don't know if it's just daisy and julian or if it's daisy julian and christian either way from the little snippet that we got of Julian, I am, I know, I know, I know that Julian, okay, <laughs> I know that Julian is gonna, he's gonna wreck me. He's gonna wreck me and he, intense. I need to finish one of these before I hop into that. Instead of that, we have two book choices, two very viral books that I ordered on Amazon and I kind of, I ordered both of them because I will end up reading both of them but I wanted to be able to decide which one I was feeling because they're very different vibes and I didn't know what my mood would be after Magnolia Parks. These are the two books. We have The Seven Year Slip by Ashley Poston. It's like a contemporary romance book but it has a slight amount of magical realism because it's basically about like a time traveling apartment but it's like not too heavy on the magic, so it's not like fantasy, but it's basically about this girl named Clementine and her aunt has an apartment. The apartment can travel back seven years in the past. So I guess if you like open the apartment door, you don't know if you're walking into the present or if you're walking into the apartment seven years in the past. The apartment seven years in the past has this dude in it. So it's basically like their love story falling in love. So like that's the magical realism element Element is the apartment. But I feel like this is going to be very deep. I feel like it's going to have like a very deep message. And I feel like it's also going to be very heart wrenching and heartbreaking. And I don't know if I'm really up for very high emotions after reading Magnolia Parks. Even though that book didn't give me like high emotions, it just... 
it just made me shook. And I, I don't think I can go from shook to like, I feel like this book is probably gonna make me a little bit sad at the end. So I don't think we're gonna do this right now. Definitely will be reading it though. Our other option is Bride by Ali Hazelwood. This one like just came out. Ali Hazelwood is a very famous romance author. She's written like those like women in STEM books. I read one of her books, The Love Hypothesis, and I wasn't a fan, but I'm trying to do this thing where I don't judge and completely judge an author based off just one book. Like I feel like I can judge them off of like two books. Like if I give the second book a try and I'm just like not feeling it, I'm like, okay, maybe she's not for me. But also The Love Hypothesis was her first ever, was her first book. It was like her debut novel. So I also really don't want to judge authors based on their debut novel because it's like, we're all, we're all growing. We, we all change. So like, this is her most recent one. So I feel like this will be a good, you know, I feel like I can give it a try. And it's also wildly different. This one's kind of like a paranormal romance because it's following a vampire bride and a werewolf alpha. And the girls are going feral for this on TikTok. It's like bringing up stuff called like the Omegaverse. I have no clue what the Omegaverse is, but I assume it has to do with like wolves. I feel like this would be good. This is about, her name is so weird. Her name is Misery, like Misery. I'm miserable. So I'm in misery. That is her name. Misery Lark. She's the daughter of a powerful vampire councilman. I've actually never read this blurb. Her days of living anonymous, anonymously among the humans are over. She has been called upon to uphold an alliance between the vampires and their mortal enemies, the wares. Wares are ruthless and unpredictable and their alpha, Low, Low Moreland, these names are gonna kill me. Is no expectation. He rules his pack with an absolute authority, but not without justice or feeling. It's clear from the way he tracks Misery's every movement that he doesn't trust her. If only he knew how right he was. Misery has her own reasons to agree to this marriage of convenience. Reasons that have nothing to do with the politics or alliance and everything to do with the only thing she's ever cared about. And she is willing to do whatever it takes to get back what's hers. So this is what we'll be doing. This is what we'll be in a finishing off our TikTok books with. This has like 300 and I believe like just on 400 pages. Are starting to heat it up okay we're starting to heat it up I did have to cave and I bought it on audible because I was like getting really tired and I really I, I realistically like I could have just bought it on Kindle because I think that I think I've like psyched myself up too much to where I'm like oh I can't read on I can't read on regular paper you can't so now my brain like when you tell your brain you can't do something your brain starts to believe you so I think my brain has started to believe me when I say like oh I can't read on paper so I'm gonna stop saying that because I'm gonna go broke if I keep saying that. I went slightly broke today and I got it on Audible because I've been listening to it while simultaneously reading it. I put it on two times speed so it's like, it's speaking it at the same time as my eyes are moving. It's actually a very luxurious experience. Like I do feel like I just like paid for like first class at an airport or first class on a flight. But we're finally getting into it. I feel like Personally, I feel like this is like a slower start romance because I'm like, I'm finally at page like a hundred or so. And I feel like our characters haven't had many interactions. I would say it hasn't been like world building because again, it's not like an intense fantasy. It's just like they're vampires, they're werewolves. Like we kind of know what vibes those are, mortal enemies. But we haven't had many like tense moments of interaction. This is our first moment where I'm like, okay, like, okay, like this could, this could heat up, this could heat up. Accept the spit? His apology. Oh. Oh, oh my god, what is happening? <laughs> sure, why not? It was so sincere and spontaneous. Just hold his head still and don't let him move. Yes, hands on the chin, a temporary interference. I don't stop until I'm extra sure that my hold on him is tight. And when I pull back, his body relaxes at once. Don't mind the change of scenery. 
I am back at my mom's house. I finished the book last night. It's time to give you my thoughts. I had time in the shower to mull it over because this one was like a harder rating. This one, this one required a little bit more thought, but I've landed on my rating for Bride being a 3.5 star. I was kind of going between if I wanted it to be like 3.5 or 4, but I don't think it's as high as a 4 because I rated Icebreaker a four did i rate it icebreaker or four or four point five i don't want it to be in the four range because icebreaker was in that range and it definitely didn't give me the same feelings as icebreaker but i wasn't thrown off by it i feel like i was very indifferent towards this book i think listening to it on audiobook while reading it definitely helped its rating listening to a book that may be more boring on audiobook definitely helps you be more entertained by it just because the actors they just help to make things so entertaining like the voice actress of this book she was just so good like the way that she was switching between the characters voices the way she was doing the child's voice the way she was even doing Lowe's voice like I was just I felt like I was watching a show and it's a lot easier to kind of sit through a more boring show than it is to like sit through a more boring book that you're like reading actively I wouldn't necessarily say that this book is boring like I wouldn't say that but I think for me personally if I had to read it on its own without the audiobook it would have taken me a lot longer and it, it might have been an experience that was a lot less enjoyable Allie Hazelwood just might not be like my she just might not be the author for me I'm still not gonna completely write her off because this is a lot better than the love hypothesis in my opinion i really didn't like the love hypothesis but this book i don't have disdain for it i'm just very i'm just indifferent it wasn't a super great thing that i read it wasn't a super terrible thing that i read it's very much in the middle it has some really good moments but it had moments where i was just like i i, I don't know if i really care like i don't really know if i'm gonna really think about this story and this book afterwards i want to like ali hazelwood because she's such a popular author and anytime she comes out with a book like the girls are going feral for it ali hazelwood definitely has a tiktok hype so i always feel left out and a lot of people say that she has this specific writing vibe and style she likes to write these like quirky female main characters and then she always kind of writes her male main characters as these like brooding sulky like big men which isn't necessarily like a bad thing but i think maybe i'm just not as into that kind of trope as i thought so maybe the repetition of it is what's kind of throwing me off. I was indifferent towards the romance in this book. I felt like the romance was secondary and the plot and the world building came first. I really, really enjoyed the world building and the plot of vampires versus werewolves and learning about the territories, following the mystery that Misery is trying to solve, the politics of the different species. And I really enjoyed moments where we were learning about how the species are different, just learning different like lore. It really brought me back to the early 2000s era of like watching Teen Wolf, watching the Vampire Diaries, where like everybody does vampires and werewolves a little bit different. Like everybody has their own little flair. And I liked to see how Allie Hazelwood kind of world builded vampires and werewolves and made them different than like the canon. That was really keeping me going and keeping me entertained. Wanting to figure out what Misery was trying to figure out really kept me into the story for sure, rather than the romance between Lo and Misery, because I don't know, like it just, it just didn't feel there. I didn't feel much tension between them. The moments that I did tap, cause you're probably like, well girl, why did you tap so much? I actually don't know. I'm like actually very concerned. I feel like Lo really saved this romance for me because he had that whole like alpha territorial, I want to smell you type thing going on. The smelling thing lost me a little bit. The smelling thing lost me a little bit, but I get it because he's a werewolf. I knew it would happen. I knew it would be a thing. It was a little bit odder than I anticipated. I think Lo very possessive moments really saved the romance for me. Maybe one aspect that made it harder for me to get really, really into the romance was the lack of Lowe's POV. After going from reading two dual POV romance books, reading a single POV romance book only from the female main character's POV, definitely is a little bit tougher. We do get like snippets of Lowe's thoughts at the beginning of each chapter, but it just wasn't enough. Dual POV really helps build tension and helps build that angst. We know what each of the characters are thinking at each moment. We know like how they feel when they look at each other, like all of these things. Whenever it's like singular POV, it's kind of like the other character guessing. Like it's kind of just misery kind of guessing and assuming how Lo is feeling the entire book. Lo's thoughts would have ate. If we got full blown chapters of Lo in his full wolfy brain, thinking about misery, pining for misery, being miserable for misery, that would have had me at the edge of my seat with the romance. 3.5. I, I wouldn't say don't read it. I would say if you want to give it a try, give it a try. But it definitely wasn't like hands down i'm obsessed like the other two books that i read that concludes our book talk viral book 
reading session. I found two book series book series and authors that I will be continuing with and I will be putting on a on a must read list. I really wish I had Magnolia Parks here to hold up but that wow wow. I really enjoy book talk because personally without book talk I probably wouldn't have been able to get into reading as much as I have. It definitely showed me like my favorite books like some of my favorite books I would not have found without book talk simply because I think it's just a great way to find recommendations by people that you probably relate to and like the same things that you like. Normal people recommending these books and just going viral for recommending these books but like with their own authentic opinions. Just seeing people's genuine reaction to Magnolia Parks over and over and over again like okay well like why would I not read it like these are how the girls are reacting like why would I not read it and then I felt the same. I think the one thing is like we have to separate our connotation with hype to enjoyment like just because something is hyped up doesn't necessarily mean that we're gonna enjoy it doesn't necessarily mean we're gonna enjoy every viral thing but I don't think that takes away from its validation of being viral. Yes, I know people think that this is like trash book, trash literature and all that stuff. I don't think it makes it any less deserving of being viral. Something being viral means that a large enough demographic of people really enjoyed it and that's all that matters. Let me know if you guys enjoy book talk, if you think that it's a toxic space or if you think that it promotes an unhealthy amount of overconsumption of books. I don't know, a lot of people have been saying that, but in my eyes, it's not like we're buying a bunch of fast fashion clothes like we're buying books I feel like that's a better thing for us to be buying than like Shein I get why these books are worth the hype I see why this has the hype I see why this went viral I personally am not along the lines of the virality of it but I could see it the Magnolia Parks and Icebreaker I am with you girls these have me in a chokehold especially Magnolia Parks has me in a chokehold I'll see you guys next time bye